these are the few chosen <laughs> to experience the Bliss Body experience. Thank you so much for coming. Love you guys. Um, okay, so I, I've, I've already met <laughs> most of you guys and I know you, but um, for those that don't know, my name is Alex Everett, uh, Black Feather, and um, I've been studying a lot of different forms of, of yoga, you know, sound yoga, sound healing techniques, as well as um, different types of, of Native American um, experiences. So I'm not going to be preaching about any particular uh, spiritual way uh, so much as combining all of them and drawing things from different places. The main purpose of this is to bring about bliss. So. Um, in Sanskrit, Nandam means not changing. It means it's it's your your true self. So we're going to be getting in touch with our true selves, our higher selves, and the bliss that is present within you at all times and can be tapped into at any time. The ocean of bliss. Um, Steve Ross is one of my favorite yogis. He has a book called Happy Yoga that uh, discusses a lot of these different ways, but um, he, he puts it this way. A wise man I met in India put it to me this way. You're living on a mountain of gold and you don't realize it. Every time it rains, the dirt and muck are washed away and the gold is revealed. And you run out into the rain, scooping up fistfuls of gold and dancing around. But you mistakenly think that the rain is bringing the gold. So you worship the rain and you make sacrifices with your schedule to please the rain. When there's a drought, you become poor, starve, and bemoan the absence of the rain. But the gold is always there, just beneath the surface, and the rain has simply been revealing it. So if you just dust off the mountain the slightest bit, you'd see it for what it is. Scratch the surface. Look beneath. Look deeper. So, there's no reason to rely on the rain. The, the point of this is there's no reason to rely on external things to bring you happiness. You can be happy. There's there's monks who have spent time in prison and have reached enlightenment there. You know, Gandhi and numerous other people. So I'm gonna uh, go over some techniques to bring about this bliss. I'm gonna talk about the koshas, which are subtle sheaths, uh, sort of like an aura of your body that um, go from from subtle to to fine. And um, I'm going to do a little bit of blissful movements, chakra balancing meditation, um, talk about freeing yourself from fear, and then I'm going to talk about some natural foods and natural medicines that can also bring you to a very blissful place. Um, so the Ayurvedic definition of health in the Eastern tradition is a body that's free of toxins. You, you get that very light feeling and a mind that's at peace. So. Uh, we're going to talk about some ways to bring that about cleansing and cleansing the mind, cleansing the body. Um, and we're going to do a breath technique. So there are these five sheets that uh, that they're all interwoven that make up your your aura. The first one is called the Ana Maya Kosha, and this is the the physicality. Your it's, it means the food body, the food apparent self. Then there's the prana maya kosha, which is uh, your breath body. The breath is incredibly important because it it not only uh, indicates your your uh, state of well-being. You know, like if you're uh, upset, if you're like you start to breathe very rapidly, and uh, if people say take a deep breath, calm down. Well, that's very true, but uh, it also, you can use the breath to influence your state in that way. So a lot of people are not aware of their breath at all, and uh, they say you only use uh, you know 10% of your brain, but most people only use a third of their lung capacity. So when you tap into those other two thirds of your lung capacity, you can gain higher levels of consciousness because you have more oxygen, more blood circulating. And uh, we're gonna do some breath techniques to show that. So this is uh, the mind in terms of like your ego, the I, me, mind aspect of the mind. So this is what causes liberation, uh, but it also causes the suffering, uh, the desires that cause the suffering. So we're going to talk about how to release those desires and become a 
aware of the bliss that you already are. Uh, the Vijnana Mayakosha. Vijnana. This is the wisdom body. So this is uh, like your five senses, um, your perception. But this is like where you get to in meditation, where you, you lose uh, track of the desires of your mind. You realize that. And then the final one, which is the namesake of this workshop, is the Ananda Mayakosha, the finest of the subtle bodies. This is the bliss body. So this is when you're sometimes in a deep sleep state. Uh, musicians, as we were talking about earlier, who uh, are in the zone children playing, uh, when you lose track of any desires because you, you are there, you're, you're in bliss, and it's, it's completely pervasive. So we're going to talk about some ways to get into that zone. So, uh, some people might know, but the meaning of yoga is uh, connection. So it's like to yoke uh, is where the Sanskrit root comes from. But so what we're connecting our, our mind with our body, with our breath, with our spirit, uh, when you connect all these things, uh, you are just your true self, you're just one. You know, connecting with each other, connecting with the earth, the universe, that's a beautiful, beautiful sort of connection. 